The federal government announced its latest push to spur immigration today. A five-year pilot project seeks to address rural job shortages by bringing immigrants and their families to small and remote communities. Ahmed Hussein is the immigration minister. He joins us now from Toronto. Minister, nice to see you. Why focus on these small or remote communities? Because uh, rural and northern uh, Canadian communities provide uh, almost 30% of our GDP in Canada, but 78% of all newcomers to Canada go and settle in the large urban centers. So uh, employers and uh, municipal leaders and others have been telling us that they need uh, people to uh, come and fill unfilled jobs in uh, rural and northern uh, communities, as well as retain people uh, in northern and rural communities. And the businesses that are growing there uh, have a, a difficulty to attract and retain workers th as they grow. So this is a, an economic imperative. It's also a demographic challenge that we need to meet. Immigration is not the only tool, but it's one of the main tools that can be used and will be used to address uh, these particular challenges. Okay, I can guess a little bit why when a new immigrant arrives in Canada, settles in a bigger city because that's where they will have more support, more possible networks. When they go to small remote communities, they're pretty isolated. So what will be offered to help these new Canadians settle into these small towns that don't have the same infrastructure for them as, you know, big centers? Well, actually, a lot of uh, uh, rural communities have now invested in, uh, in settlement and integration programs because it's an economic imperative for them. Uh, because usually many small towns have one major employer, and if that major employer does not have enough workers, uh, that major employer moves and the town uh, folds. And so many mayors have taken a leadership role in making sure that they create a welcoming infrastructure for newcomers who are skilled, who are happy to gravitate towards economic opportunities that exist in rural Canada. And what municipal leaders have told uh, the federal government, the government of Canada, is that uh, we need government to support us. And we've listened and we've responded today. And w the announcement that I made today uh, is essentially a call for proposals. It's a competition. We're going to select communities based on two criteria. One, availability of, availability of jobs for newcomers. And second, the, cr the existence of a welcoming infrastructure for newcomers so that they can settle with their families and, uh, and, and meet those labor market shortages and bring much needed skills to rural Canada. The program is really intended to work on retention so that when, you know, and, and it's not a temporary foreign worker program, it's a permanent residency program. It includes the families and the children. And when those people uh, establish roots in rural Canada, it's very difficult for that skilled immigrant to then move uh, a few years down the road. Well, we'll see, you know, how the success of, of, of this program works. But I want to ask you this. You were, you were very critical this week of one conservative suggestion that the whole Canadian border be declared an official point of entry. Now, this to avoid giving status to border crossers. You know, they, they is a controversial issue because these border crossers would then be automatically denied refugee status in Canada, would be able to turn them away. You were very critical. Why were you so critical of that suggestion? Well, it's very simple. It's impractical because uh, the Safe Third Country Agreement, uh, which has determined uh, that uh, the agreement applies at official ports of entry, you can't change the agreement uni unilaterally. You cannot change a bilateral agreement uh, unilaterally. And that's essentially what the concern is. But, Minister, would you wouldn't for. be changing the agreement, uh, you would be changing the Canadian border you, status. Well, the, the, sec, the, sec, the second reason it's impractical is if you declare the whole border an official port of entry, then you would have to staff the whole border mm. uh, with uh, law enforcement officials in the same way that official ports of entry at the, at the current time are staffed by law enforcement officials. So that's what uh, I was referring to. But, uh, you know, for further details, I think you should uh, direct that question to our border security minister who will be happy to uh, engage uh, with you on that issue and and he has been engaging his Amer American counterparts on addressing uh, the issue of modernization of the safer country agreement in a responsible manner not in a 
in practical manner uh, as the conservatives are suggesting. I, I want to get also to, to, to another issue. Um, you were in mm -hmm. Quebec last week for the cabinet, uh, for the cabinet retreat. Um, and and yeah. Quebec is calling for more autonomy over immigration in the province. Now, the Prime Minister has signaled a willingness to work with Quebec on this issue. So how much leeway should the province get? Well, uh, as you know, uh, the issue of immigration in Quebec is governed by the Canada-Quebec Immigration Accord. Uh, it's an accord that has been in place for decades. It's a, it's, it's a very, very good accord uh, that uh, aims uh, and, and results in collaboration between Canada and Quebec on uh, economic immigrants. And of course, uh, as a government, uh, you know, uh, we value the collaboration that we've had with the province of Quebec, uh, the, uh, Canadi uh, the Canadian uh, Federation of Independent Business, uh, which looks at labor shortages across the country, has identified uh, that Quebec needs uh, 100,000 workers, 100,000 workers, and uh, immigration is one of the ways to, uh, to address that labor shortage. Yeah, yeah, but um, I'm wondering this. So, so how can you suggest that one province lower immigration levels or accept this while your government promotes increasing uh, immigration? We, we didn't, uh, of, we, we, that's not our position. That's uh, the position of the, uh, of the provincial government in Quebec. Uh, but as I said, uh, we've expressed concerns around that approach. Our approach is different. We've grown immigration levels every single year that we've been in office because that's what employers have been asking us to do. That's what Canadian municipal leaders have been asking us to do. Uh, any concerns that we have uh, with respect to the position of the government of Quebec, we are uh, taking it uh, within, the, within the framework of the Canada-Quebec Accord. Uh, the collaboration is great and uh, I'm more than uh, positive that our discussions will be very fruitful uh, as we move forward on continuing the great collaboration that we have together under the Canada-Quebec Accord. I'm just guessing, but immigration and refugees will certainly come up in the next uh, federal election campaign, I'm sure. Ahmed Hussain in Toronto, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.